Hello everybody, I am Lavis and the SCP I'm going to tell you about today is SCP-4833, The Syncope Symphony. This is the final SCP in my Syncope Symphony series, and it is the symphony itself. If you want to hear about the other SCPs that have led up to this discussion, there's a playlist on my channel containing every SCP regarding the Syncope Symphony, and it will all come together here. With that out of the way, let's begin. Rows upon rows of empty seats line the hall. You've made sure only you're here tonight. The others are all off on business or caught up in their work. You made sure to register a week's holiday after the business down in Megalith. Your sheer exhaustion needs to be tended to. In the few months since your promotion, you haven't had much time to yourself, but there have been things you've been curious about for a long time. Things beyond your particular remit. You made a requisition request for a file, stuck in a filing cabinet in one of the more obscure parts of Site-01. It's pretty clear that it's something most people would like to forget. The reel begins to play, all automated of course. Grains flicker across the screen before bursting into an image. It's a high school playing field. The year must be about 1975 or 76. There's no audio and the image flickers and distorts at inconvenient moments, but the other forms are all clear. They're playing… rugby? American football? Something like that. It's not quite right. The camera stretches and moves around. A smiling group of people, spectators, all wave at the camera. Their movements are not constructed or acted or precise. They're messy and uncertain giggling and youthful. People. Real people sitting right in front of you. Right? You look down at the document, but you can't quite concentrate. You remember school, don't you? Your experience was different. Different place. Different time. But you remember it. The disciplined format of time. The early pangs of heartache. The promise of all your dreams before you. An infinity of youth shaped by your name. It was all ahead of you, that sunset curve over the horizon. You do remember, right? Don't you remember? By order of the O5 Council, the following file is Level 5 classified. Unauthorized access will result in immediate termination. Item Number SCP-4833 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-4833 activity is currently being monitored by MTF-811, Savage Beasts. Ada-11 will immediately respond to any reported incidents, ascertain the situation, and attempt to contain any potential anomalies. Following Incident 4833-8C, the nature of SCP-4833 is considered to be radically altered. SCP-4833 will be reclassified and its file altered as soon as Agent O'Hara's debriefing has concluded. Description SCP-4833 is an organized group of reality benders, ordinarily going by the name Syncope Symphony. SCP-4833 is believed to contain between 10 and 29 individuals, all of whom exhibit similar abilities and properties. Beginning in the late 1940s, the group's primary activity has been experimentation on youths between 15 and 18 in age, with the intention of anomalously altering them for unknown purposes. SCP-4833 was once a significant player in anomalous affairs, being particularly feared within the anomalous underworld for the kidnap and forcible alteration of numerous individuals since the late 1940s. However, their presence has significantly decreased in recent years. Beyond this, very little is known of SCP-4833's purpose, modus operandi, or fundamental nature. They have only been encountered indirectly by Foundation agents through events SCP-4833 has orchestrated. Testimonies from several survivors indicate that SCP-4833's ultimate goal is the institution of a state of harmony. What this entails is unknown. 
SCP-4833's anomalous properties seem to center around memory and music. In most of the forms in which the Foundation have encountered them, they appear either as a performing orchestra or a musical supply shop. Sightings of SCP-4833 members invariably mention that they are masked. However, due to the amnestic effects that all such individuals have suffered, further details are unclear. SCP-4833 was first brought to the Foundation's attention in the mid-1970s. A dedicated Foundation task force was established shortly after with the express purpose of investigating and tracking down SCP-4833. Although this task force has not succeeded in tracking down any members of SCP-4833 to date, they have provided a great deal of information which has aided in containing SCP-4833 activity on a wider scale. Timeline of SCP-4833 1947 Believed to be the beginning of SCP-4833's activities, subjects begin to be kidnapped worldwide with a particular concentration in the vicinity of Yellowstone National Park. 1964 First mass experimentation, taking place in Boise, Idaho. Due to pressure from the GOC and various other organizations, SCP-4833 is believed to have relocated its primary base of operations to B County. 1969, SCP-4833 opens a musical supply shop known as Syncope Symphony in the town of Redacted. No anomalous activity initially present. Autumn 1975, mass cognitohazardous events taking place at Lake <laughs> Although no conclusive evidence linking this to SCP-4833 has been found, the nature of the anomaly fits SCP-4833's modus operandi. 1976, series of experiments performed by SCP-4833 at Kirk Lawnwood High School and <laughs> High School. The schools and towns in question were swiftly evacuated and Foundation control was enforced. The Syncope Symphony Musical Supply Shop was found abandoned upon a Foundation raid. 1977 The number of subjects kidnapped by SCP-4833 sharply decreases when compared to 1976, beginning a trend which has continued to the present. Figures in the anomalous underground have speculated that this is due to SCP-4833 achieving its goal at some point in 1976, with further kidnappings simply being a way of fine-tuning. 1988 Last known encounter between Foundation personnel and an individual altered by SCP-4833 prior to 2019. 2019 Incident 4833-8C, which will be discussed later. Addendum 4833-1, Interview Log The following is a log of Agent John Hardcastle's interaction with an anomalous reality bender. Date, September 11th, 1988. Location, Traktir na Zabitie, a bar in Arkhangelsk, Soviet Union. Notes Agent Hardcastle has spent several months researching the earliest records of SCP-4833's experiments. He had come across records indicating that one Vasily Stroganov, an individual known to Agent Hardcastle, had been the subject of SCP-4833 experiments in the late 1940s. Mr. Stroganov was tracked down to Arhangelsk and interviewed alone by Agent Hardcastle. Begin log. Agent Hardcastle activates his camera. He is in a wide, deserted alleyway. It is snowing heavily. A sign can be seen saying Traktir, Russian for tavern. He moves toward the doorway and enters. The interior is dark and dirty. The walls are undecorated brick and a few tables are scattered around the place. The bartender is an overweight middle-aged man who is clearly inebriated. Another man, Vasily Stroganov, is slumped over a glass of vodka. There is nobody else in the establishment. The conversation, mostly in Russian, has been translated. Vodka, please. The bartender fetches a glass of vodka. As he does so, Stroganov sits upright and stares at Agent Hardcastle, who nods at him. 
the bartender gives the drink to Agent Hardcastle. Much custom this time of year? A bit. You American? English. But don't worry, I'm one of the good ones. There are no good Englishmen. But there are no good Russians either. Agent Hardcastle hands the bartender a thick wad of ruble notes. Here's a little tip, for some... privacy. The bartender looks through the money, nods, and shuffles into the back room. Agent Hardcastle pulls up a seat next to Stroganov. Shoot. Hello, Vasily. It's been a while, hasn't it? Please, just leave me alone. You promised to leave me alone. After Buddha, after I saved- I'm sorry, Vasily. I really am. I didn't want to be here, but there's something bigger than you or I going on. I'm an old man, John. I can't help you. I live in a crummy apartment in a concrete building nobody cares about, watching the snow go past. I don't even have heating. The empires I used to- Stroganov shakes his head and does not speak for several seconds. Just go away. I can't. I wish I could, but I can't. I need you to tell me about syncope, Vasily. Stroganov visibly tenses. No. No, no. Go away, John. You don't know what you're dealing with. Children, Vasily, just like you were. I need to know what happened in 1954. No, I can't. Please, I can't. We can take you in. Set you up somewhere nicer. Somewhere, it doesn't matter where you set me up. It'll all be the same. Stroganov takes a large swig of vodka. Have you been here long? What do you think of the city? That's not... It's fine, I guess. Same as any other Soviet city I've been to. Big, built with concrete. Another cold and obscure Russian town. This town doesn't feel obscure to its residents. It's the biggest city for hundreds of miles. But for a man in the West, a man looking at the map of the world, it seems like the farthest outpost of civilization. Everything you think anchors you is just a minute island washing through an endless sea. There's always another design, bigger than the last. That's what they told me, and they'll find me, John. I can't tell you anything. You've already helped me, Vasily. They believe in a design bigger than the last. That's enough. Come on, we can keep you comfortable, safe. You can tell me all about what those powers are that you never wanted to reveal to me. It's not like the old days. We're kinder now. Gentler. This place will be obscure too. This time. This place. That footage on your camera. The 1980s. What will people think of it? A glorious decade. For some. For others, I think it will be remembered as a dark place. Cold and full of uncertainty, like wading through a lake at night. All the more reason to improve the world then, and we can start with syncope. But they're barely even a player anymore, didn't you know that? Hardly anyone's been taken these last few years. They found what they were looking for. Can't you leave them alone? Can't you leave us all well enough alone? Let me die in the cold, John. Let me forget what a miserable waste I've been. I don't want to go back. They're taking children, Vasily. I don't care. Agent Hardcastle sighs heavily. Then I'll have to take you in by force. Stroganov stares at Agent Hardcastle for several seconds. Who is Marcy, John? Agent Hardcastle moves back sharply. I, I, I don't know what you mean. Stop it. Marcy Green, a village girl who would dance in the moors. Practicing for a life you both knew she'd never have. You'd sneak out of boarding school to watch her. I, I, I don't. Please, your first kiss. You talked of running away together, but your parents found out and you were taken away. You were 17, the last summer of your life. I said I'd wait, but you didn't. You went off. She probably did too, but I can't see that much. The Marcy in your head is just a shadow. A shade. A frail copy that only tells a fraction of the story of the original. Why don't you go back, John? Go. God, I'm sorry. Go back to the fields. Y yes, go back. I'm sorry, John. I'm sorry. Agent Hardcastle collapses, gibbering for several seconds before expiring. Stroganov stares into space, 
mutely crying for several seconds. I had to. I had to. They'll never get out of my head. They want it too badly, don't you see? Don't you know what you did? Stroganov shakes his head and screws his eyes closed. The feed flickers and cuts out. And log. You remember Hardcastle. He'd been at Site 90 when you'd just started out of the Foundation, back in the late 80s. He'd been a mentor to you, fresh from your doctorate and hungry for knowledge. A few months later, he'd disappeared. Transferred, you'd been told. Now he barely existed at all. Not many people left to remember him, and they'll be dead soon. This document immortalizes him, but only as a description of a recording, an abstraction of abstraction. You light up a cigarette and keep watching the footage. The cameraman is at home now. His mom's clothes are old-fashioned even for the time period. She looks like a faded 50s housewife, smiling a perfect smile at the camera. Her anachronism is flawed though, and little bits of the contemporary are sneaking in. Her father smiles. short sleeved shirt, old-fashioned watch, beer can, sunglasses. A man who never thinks he's out of place and always is. You know these people. They're the same as any thousands of parents who live today. But their past placement still changes them, alters them. They're not the same. They're too natural to be from back then. You must have been, what, 13? 14 back in 1976? It's become a lost time, even to you. You only remember flashes, a woman smiling, a father laughing, that person you fell in love with, teachers with strange faces, grains on old camera footage, black and white, color TV, shadows of shadows. You return to the file. Addendum 4833-2, Recovered Documents. The following documents were recovered from the personal effects of Agent Valery Kowalski after her suicide in 1997. They were compiled by her in the course of her investigation into SCP-4833. The text of these documents is transcribed below. Document 1. Copy of a page of an MCND shipping manifest, detailing goods imported into the USA from 1947. May 8th. Item number SS-13. One French horn. Price $11,099. Notes. Strong amnesiac effect. Forces the user to forget key aspects of their childhood. May 8th. Item number SS-14. One copy of book Visions of the 20th Century, 1940-1970 for $1,120. Notes: Non-anomalous, but contains impossibly accurate predictions and photographs known to be taken after its date of publication. October 14th, item number SS15, 30 prototype amnesiac drugs for $45,900. Notes taken from SCP Foundation Q facility. October 14th, item number SS-16. 16 bassoons, costing $56,900. Notes, possesses a memory restoration effect, experimentation into implanted memories ongoing. October 14th, item number SS-17. One Yellowstone Park Visitor's Guide, circa 1970, costing $20,000. Notes: Obtained from SCP Foundation Q facility, tagged with the label Department of Temporal Anomalies. Date: November 19th. Item number: SS18. 7 documents and items recovered from the Marianas Trench, costing $101,000. Notes: No further information provided by Miss Dark. November 28th. Item number SS-19, one wooden violin costing $3,250. Notes: Non-anomalous, but due to sourcing of the wood from Yggdrasil, is particularly susceptible to anomalous alterations. Document 2, Message from Foundation Facility Q in 1959. To Director Holloway, from Researcher Brown, date July 16, 1959. Message begin. 
Regarding subject BH12, little response observed in hippocampus despite extensive tests. Researchers also concerned about safety of their own memories. Asbestos suits effective but staff increasingly reluctant to use due to health concerns. Recommend funding for Gregory's new formaldehyde-lined suits. Symptoms of BH12 remain constant, complete absence of own memories, but consistent belief that they are a school child in 1976, despite lack of ability to give accurate information on the events after 1954 and ignorance of much of recent history. Infective capacities, however, seem to have increased. Curious obsession with exploration of World War II-era bunkers recently noted. Observations continue. P.S. Deirdre and I once again want to thank you for dinner last night. When can we return the invitation? Deirdre is eager to try out her new electric skillet on something really ambitious. Message end. Document 3. Extracts from a report of unknown provenance concerning contained anomalies in Foundation Facility Q at the time of its closure, 1968. Anomalous Subject 1 is a male, aged 19. Subject was incarcerated by the Foundation following demonstration of anomalous memory-altering abilities. Subject was anomalously altered at an unknown point in 1966. Subject described experimenters as wearing white carnival masks. Subject is capable of temporal alterations. They can specifically change events which they perceived prior to 1966, but only to a highly limited degree and with minimal alteration to the overall flow of events. Very little has been changed, except for the event of a road trip taking place in 1965, and the outcome of brief romance Subject had with his classmate Valerie Smith in 1964. Subject is incapable of retaining any long-term memories which occurred after the experimentation performed on them. They believe the year is still 1966, and often believe they are still being experimented upon. Recommend transfer to Site-107 for experimentation by the Department of Temporal Anomalies. Anomalous Subject 88 is a female, aged 36. Subject is believed to have undergone significant anomalous alterations in 1949, to a degree that permanently damaged their cognitive capacity. Subject appears obsessed with the Marianas Trench, and frequently talks about it being a sheer fall off the edge of the world. Notably, statements by subject are highly consistent with Redacted. Subject has an advanced piano playing ability not known to be present prior to the experimentation. Subject speaks in an unknown language during all times where the piano has been played. Analysis by linguists has revealed significant similarities to the Algonquian languages, especially Potawatomi. O5 Command has ordered subject to be transferred to Site-01 immediately. However, Due to dissent from the Ethics Committee over Redacted Vivisection, this order has been temporarily halted. Anomalous Subject 212 was a female whose age at death was 30 years. Incarcerated since 1959, Subject's memories are entirely replaced by memories of an unknown 17-year-old schoolchild, claiming to be from 1976. Subject's predictions of events in the last decade have proven to be entirely incorrect. However, claimed that events such as the assassination of a President Kennedy and a war between the United States of America and an unknown entity called North Vietnam, possibly related to 3rd century true dynasty, Republic of Hanoi, would occur in the 1960s and 70s. Subject possessed anomalous memory replacement abilities against all unprotected individuals to come within a 5 meter radius. Subject found hanged on October 9, 1969, shortly before Facility Q's closure and implementation of Site System. No note was found, however, a series of pencil drawings of a violin, a World War II era bunker, and a Super 8 film camera of unknown brand were found in her quarters, having apparently been composed shortly before her suicide. Document 4. Video log of footage recovered from a Super 8 film camera, found in a small cave in Idaho in 1985. Begin log. 0 to 43 seconds. The video opens on an unknown hillside with a landscape reminiscent of the American Midwest 
but with the colors differing significantly from baseline reality. A small settlement or town can be seen at the bottom of the hill. It is reminiscent of many towns in America from the mid-1970s. A large cloud, reminiscent of a vortex, can be seen over the town. It is intermittently red and black in coloration. Several indistinct gray shapes can be seen emerging from it and heading towards the town. The camera's movements are consistent with being held by an individual familiar with its use. The weather is, however, causing significant shaking. 43 seconds to 8 minutes 54 seconds. The cameraman begins to run heavily up the hill. The image here is blurry and details are indistinct. 8 minutes 54 to 9 minutes 2 seconds. The cameraman briefly drops the camera. While picking it up, he is briefly visible. A white male in his mid-teens, with a violin case strapped to their back. Beyond a long hairstyle typical of the 1970s, no other details are clearly visible. 9 minutes 2 seconds to 11 minutes 12. The cameraman begins to run again. After a couple of minutes, he comes across a cave. A light can be seen shining from within. 11 minutes 12 seconds to 14 minutes 33. The cameraman enters the cave. A thin, rose-tinted film can be seen stretched across the center of the cave. Crude graffiti, which reads, Safe House, can be seen on the far side of the cave, beyond the film. The cameraman lets the camera fall to his side and walks forward, towards the film. He switches the camera off shortly before entry. 14 minutes 44 seconds to 15 minutes 27. The video opens onto an image of the cameraman, now severely emaciated. He is talking to the camera, but due to localized image distortion, it is not clear what he's saying. His speech becomes increasingly desperate before he turns off the camera. The coloration of the environment is now correct. 15 minutes 27 seconds to 17 minutes 38. The video opens onto the hillside, as seen from the cave entrance. The jolts to the camera seem to show the cameraman limping, and appears to retch and throw up before continuing onwards. 17 minutes 38 seconds to 18 minutes 3 seconds. The camera is pointed at the former site of the town. It is in ruins, but large scaffolding and construction materials can be seen across it. Thousands of indistinct but apparently identical humanoids can be seen engaged in construction work. Nobody else is visible. All are wearing identical orange jumpsuits. The extreme weather seen in the earlier version is not present. 18 minutes 3 seconds to 18 minutes 7 seconds. The camera is dropped and the image abruptly cuts out. 18 minutes 7 seconds to 19 minutes 25. The camera is picked up. Its angle points towards the town, which now resembles Boise, Idaho in the mid-1940s. 19 minutes 25 seconds to 19 minutes 30. The camera turns towards the cameraman. Their face and hands are now indistinct and not visible due to image distortion. From what is visible, the cameraman appears to be screaming. The camera is turned off. 19 minutes 30 seconds to 19 minutes 35. The video opens on the interior of the cave. Several words can be seen scrawled on the wall in black marker. Synapse, Sibilance, Signs, Sayonara, The Sibyl. One word has been circled. Syncope. 19 minutes 35 seconds to 19 minutes 49. The camera turns towards the cameraman. They are clearly no longer emaciated. Their face and hands suffer the same distortion, but markedly worse. They are wearing a white Venetian mask. The camera is turned off. There is a place that nobody talks about. It's buried miles under Yellowstone Park, and it's a mystery even to the foundation which created it. It is the one thing which truly terrifies them. The primary purpose of this place, this cavernous expanse of steel and concrete, is repopulation, reconstruction, restoration. But there are things buried in it that have a broader purpose. Scranton Reality Anchors, the X-Acts, other buried machines you know nothing about. 
things which alter time and change causality in ways which are subtle, unknown, unheard. Sometimes things might fall through the cracks. Smoke clouds your eyes as you stare into space deep in thought. You're too absorbed to notice changes on the screen as the reel churns and churns through its ancient pictures. A group of friends laughing in front of their lockers, talking about some forgotten joke or gossiping about unknown persons. The content is not preserved, only the form of it. A boy, unseen by the cameraman but in the background of the shot, is seen writing on a piece of paper. His eyes and face are serious in concentration. He looks up occasionally, twitchy and nervous. Beside him lies a violin case. You don't see the boy. You've already turned back to the file. He's not a part of your memory. That other image of an image of something that might have been real. Was he ever really there? Incident 4833-8C On January 26th, 2019, a hostile takeover of the abandoned auditorium at <coughs> High School was initiated by SCP-4833. Foundation operatives swiftly secured the site and quickly ascertained that only a single member of SCP-4833 was present. Agent O'Hara was sent to interview and detain the instance. The following is a log of her personal camera feed. Begin log. The member of SCP-4833, designated as SCP-4833-A, is standing in the center of the auditorium stage. Their appearance is heavily distorted, but their gait, posture, and movements are consistent with an elderly human male. They are wearing a white carnival mask and the outfit typical of American conductors of the mid-20th century. They are holding a golden violin. Around them lie a large number of items of clothing. These resemble the outfits worn by orchestra members from around the world during the early to mid 20th century. Hello there. I was wondering if I could have a chat with you for a moment. We are going to be done. It's okay. I'm not here to hurt you. I just want to understand who you are and why you're doing this. You don't need to be one. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean. I don't know of any bunker. Do you mean one of our sites? Yeah, you think you make me one of the bunkers that you are? No, that, that's not... Okay, look. Maybe we started on the wrong foot here. Could you tell me about the rest of the symphony? Your co-performers? SCP-4833-A gestures to the clothes around it. Look at these little well, work well for your wife. They're just... they're only clothes. Yeah, they're just living around. They died? Your kind can... They were playground, they were all killed by the man being sent. Oh. I see. Yeah, it's weird and easy to be true. So it wasn't a plan at all. You faded. You declined. This is going a long way ago. Really, we've got to join in time for very deep upon it. SCP-4833-A picks up its violin, taking a couple of steps towards Agent O'Hara. The latter pulls out a pistol and trains it on SCP-4833-A. Why did you experiment on children? Yeah, that's exactly right. And now you're not. What do you mean, like you? It wasn't like we were up here just like me. In the lake? We all have been doing for We all have been building. I... what? SCP-4833-A's hands are seen to visibly tremble. It seems to struggle against some unseen force centered on the violin. What do you mean, interpretation? You mean a link in one of the room you were being announced? You can go find one, don't you remember? No, there's always a meaning. Sometimes, things aren't hidden behind themselves. Interpretation, but that I mean you're admitted of understanding what I'm doing. There's no other force at play. There can't be. There's just you, and your musicians, and the children you did this to. Memory's just another method of recording. I don't know where you came from, but you're as flesh and blood as I. There's nothing mysterious about you and nothing that made you do this. We are one of the many who doesn't play in this situation. You just have to the others. Then what the hell did? SCP-4833-A plays a note on its violin. 
Agent O'Hara's right arm falls to her side and drops the gun. We were the ones that were in the What the hell did... I don't care. You took children. What even are you? I can't see your face. Memory doesn't do that. You don't even know you are him. You didn't have to make them remember. Their lives weren't worth that. And you failed. You better not have to the bunker. There is no bunker! There are no past words or forgotten peoples. You conned your followers into joining you, and they all left and died. Nobody was forgotten. There's only you. History is singular. The truth is singular. You are explicable. What happened to the class of 76 is explicable. I, I'll find it. I'll find the truth. SCP-4833-A begins to play the violin. A melody begins with a slow tempo, gradually increasing in speed and pitch. Music doesn't have a consciousness. It just seems that... You don't have a consciousness. You don't have a it, it's not... She didn't want me? N no, no, not... It was the last summer. University next year. I had a Walkman, and it rained. I asked her after, and she said it wasn't a fight. I remembered it differently. Which is the truth? SCP-4833-A's playing is becoming increasingly rapid. They appear to be lurching away from the violin. The hills were green. We were... I... I used to play the guitar. She played the drums. Her parents didn't like what we were, but that didn't... matter to us. We were going to be great. Red sky over the horizon. SCP-4833-A is now playing at a speed and complexity impossible for humans. With a great wrench, they detach themselves from the violin, collapsing to the floor. The violin hovers in the air, continuing to play. What are we? Who are we? Don't you remember? SCP-4833-A is now clutching its head. It makes a distorted sound, believed to be a scream. The violin continues to play at impossible speeds. Don't you remember? Several figures can be seen to appear around the edges of the concert hall. They all possess heavily disfigured faces and are facing Agent O'Hara. I remember. The camera feed cuts out. End log. Shortly following this, Backup was able to gain entry to the auditorium. SCP-4833-A, the clothing, the violin, and the disfigured humanoids had disappeared. Agent O'Hara was found fully conscious. Upon debriefing, she claimed to have no recollection of anyone or anything being present in the auditorium. A girl is smiling in a hallway. She laughs at some unheard joke her friend is telling her. A teacher walks past, a worried expression on her face. The sun is shining through a window. The picture quality washes the screen in grainy light. That hallway never existed anymore. This reel was recovered from the bottom of the Marianas Trench, along with a few other tiny fragments. In the dark, buried beyond where any man could go, the only place anything has ever been found of the things that once were. Nobody remembers her. All you see is some light on a page, an image, a shadow of a shade that happens to resemble this creature from long ago. It's not a memory, but a flicker that indicates that something, anything, once moved there. The reel ends, its sound echoes through the room. Click, click, click. White and black lines flicker across the screen as you sit there, cigarette smoke filling the air in front of your blank face. One day, you will never have been either. Some disaster or trivial catastrophe will happen, and the whole rigmarole will start again. A bunker, a lever, deaths and endings. A movement will end, but the symphony will go on forever. And even if it doesn't, even if it fails, your own life will be gone. 
it will be extinguished as so many others were. You will be a corpse, a skeleton, dust, a thing that never was, and nobody will remember you. The trees will grow over your grave, flowers will dance, humans will linger on, then die, or spread out among the stars with no memory of their homeland. The earth will crack and burn, and the molecules will die, and the atoms will die, and the dark will consume them all. What few scattered waves remain will dissipate, and nothing will ever have happened an infinity with no concept of itself. Or maybe not. You pick up your lighter and burn the document, watching each lick of flame consume them. You stand up, your face stark against the flickering lights, and walk out of the room. Nothing beside remains. Thank you very much for listening. This has been my final discussion on the topic of the Syncope Symphony and the Class of 76, at least until more about them is known. I hope you all enjoyed this series. If you like what you heard and would like to hear more, please consider liking and subscribing. It would be greatly appreciated. Also, if there are any SCPs that you would like to hear me read, please leave them in the comments below. Have a nice day.